You could record a piccolo and use T-verb and it, the piccolo will suddenly spring to life. You know, instead of a, a wee little whistle, it'll sound like you know, a mighty bird has invaded your studio space. T-verb emulates a mic technique that I like to say I invented because it was really novel at the time to get uh, David to sing quietly in a big room and I did not want to hear the reverb in the big room when he was singing quietly but when his voice grew louder I wanted you to hear the room. It was, a, it was very heroic because Heroes is that kind of a song, it's almost Wagnerian. I found, you know, years later, I actually used it a little bit for the drum sound in uh, Hans' studios. The, the, the drums are recorded distant mic with a distant mic that I may or may not have put a, a gate on it to open up when it got really loud. But you kind of had the, to do these things to commit them to tape because uh, we didn't have plugins like we have nowadays. So recording David's uh, three microphones on one track was only because I had one track. Now that it is in the box and it is a fabulous fabulous application called T-Verb, named after me, which I'm very humbled by. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, it's so much more useful in many ways that I didn't anticipate. I mean, many people say that when you record, you're not only recording an instrument, you're recording a space as well, and the, an, an environment. And the environment is just as important as the source of the sound. Okay, uh, this is uh, my third solo album, which is unreleased, but I'm, I'm working on it now. And I thought it would be good to use a couple of songs to give you examples of uh, other applications for T-Verb besides the, uh, the hero's uh, vocal. And uh, so I'll just play a little bit of it. No, no vocals yet. I'm not going to give away what the song is about or anything, but this is a cool backing track. Real instruments, real drummer, real bass player, me. Uh, guitars and all that, singers all over the place. So I'm, it's not really a selfie, this, this is, these are studio sessions. Okay, so that's the nature of it. And I've got a, a couple of acoustic guitars that are just kind of dry in, in the background, but I'm going to perk them up and put them into T-verb. And uh, I've already set up this uh, little situation here. So let's see, here's my acoustic guitars, which are normally quite dry. Going to... And here's putting a little T-verb life into them. Um, So I'm sending the guitar to the first microphone in T-verb. I'm adding some compression, and um, I have uh, the distant microphones linked, so if I change any parameter, you'll see. But anyway, let's put them in and you'll hear what's happening. So essentially what I did uh, was I put uh, my acoustic guitar, which I played in this room, into Hansa's Great Hall via T-verb. I mean, that's a bit excessive. I'll, I'll take that down in the mix a little bit, but I just want you to know how uh, the difference is just astounding to have something recorded on my desk microphone that's now going into this big room. And I could control the amount of uh, ambience by taking these mics a little... Oh, 
They're as close as they could be, actually. Well, I could make them, make them like really big. So that, that's putting the, the acoustic guitar reverb at the very end of the hall, you see? So it's quite, quite, a, quite useful to do this by eye and by ear. I'll bring them closer now. Less stereo by, by bringing the mics together, the, di the distant mics together. I actually prefer this sound. I will move on to the drums. The drums were played in uh, London by a great drummer called Alex Marchesone. He's a, a session guy in London. He's from Italy originally, but he plays in uh, Cats and, and all those musicals, you know, where he does that for a living, but he could play rock and roll and anything. So this is him. Uh, in my uh, studio that was named after me in London called Visconti Studio. It's in Kingston University. And here is uh, Alex playing the drums for this song. Now that's, that's not bad. <laughs> that's pretty good. So I'm gonna give, uh, breathe a little life into the uh, snare drum. This, I set this up, and uh, so I, c I could still talk you through it. So here's the same track, uh, here's without the T-verb first, no T-verb. And here's the uh, Hansa T-verb ambience added to the snare drum. Now, having worked in Hansa Studios, I can tell you that sounds real to me. That sounds the way it would if we were there. Uh, but you, don't, uh, you can go much further than that because that's just the snare drum. So I've also set up uh, something that really sounds quite great, which is um, putting the whole drum kit in T-verb. I don't think anyone's done this before except me. That's, that's dry. Everything in Hansa. That's, that's like, um, you know, when uh, Dennis Davis was the original drummer there, and uh, he came up and heard his, his drum. I'm pressing the talkback button. <laughs> he, he came in and uh, heard the sound. When he heard the sound, it blew his mind. I mean, that's, that's how good the drum sounded in Hansa. Uh, so, like, okay, uh, I have the, uh, again, the distant mics fairly close to the source, but I can get even a bigger Hansa drum sound by just moving the distance mics further away, and I'll do that. Pretty big. You can gate that further and make it more sound like Phil, Phil Collins sound and all that, but uh, uh, this is, this is uh, really great versatility in the T-verb. It's not just a vocal application. You could apply it to anything. I'll move on to another song so I could demonstrate how another instrument sounds in T-verb. This is a, another song from my uh, album that I'm working on. Uh, it's called Ice Cream Truck. I don't love them, I hate them. 
And it's a hate song about ice cream trucks. <laughs> so anyway, um, I use the phenomenal uh, Alex Marcassoni on uh, drums again, and I'm playing bass. And uh, my friend Donnie McCaslin, who is a sax player who played on David Bowie's Black Star album. So back to the, uh, the Bowie technique of, uh, that I used on Heroes, where the, the first microphone is dry and the louder Bowie sang, the other microphones opened up. I use this on Donnie's saxophone. So uh, he, he, being a jazz musician, he plays with a more dynamic range than other saxophone players. So he plays quietly and he plays loud. And uh, it sort of captures the uh, T-verb, emulates that kind of sound. Uh, if he was in standing in the middle of Hansa, this is what you would probably hear. So I'll give you a bit of the, the track first, and uh, then I'll solo Donnie. Okay, so that's the idea of the track. And uh, here's Donnie soloed with uh, T-Verb giving him a big boost. <laughs> So let me explain what just happened. If you watch the screen, you see Donnie played duh, duh, very quietly. And then when he hit his high note, you'll notice that the gate opened up on the rear microphones, on the room microphones, exact, exactly the way it worked when David was singing Heroes, that same technique I'm using here. So that does still have an application in the modern age. So, you know, so I'll play that little bit again and then keep your eyes on the uh, ears and eyes on the gate the gated, distant microphones. If I take the gate off, you'll, you'll hear that the, the mics are on all the time, so... Uh, so... You could, you could always have that, but if you want to gate them and get, you know, a spurt of room sound from uh, Hansa, then you can do that too. So, uh, this is a, a short little... Uh, tribute to T-Verb and all, all the wonderful things that you can do with it. Of course, it probably has a thousand applications, but uh, I think these were pretty obvious things to come up with. Drum sound, saxophone sound, acoustic guitar sound. I mean, you can imagine with a, a searing electric guitar solo would sound through this. It's endless what you can do with it. Uh, my name is Tony Visconti. I'm on Facebook. You can get in touch with me there. And uh, I have TonyVisconti.com as a, a website I don't often visit, but uh, my last album is on sale there. You can buy it there. <laughs> uh, I've got a great manager called Joe D'Ambrosio. If you want my professional services, you could contact him. Uh, I still work as a producer, as you can see. And um, bass player, I'll do weddings, bar mitzvahs, anything. So uh, have fun with your Eventide uh, applications, your hardware and your software. As you see, I have an H9 in my studio. This guitar pedal is without parallel. It's just fantastic. Uh, I've got my H9000. Uh, uh, H9000 is even better than the H9. It's got like all kinds of reverbs and special effects. And 
Eventide has been a part of my life since the 1970s when I bought the first harmonizer in the United Kingdom where I lived at the time and did that crazy snare drum sound on Low and Heroes and, uh, and since then I met the, the wonderful founder uh, Tony Aniello and we became, we became great friends and you know it took all these years when using Eventide to realize that Tony and I grew up 10 blocks apart in Brooklyn, New York. I didn't know that until I met him. So um, I, I consider myself part of the Eventide family.